Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fam Vester Podcast. I'm your host, Sunny Burns. And I'm your co-host, Sun Marie Burns. So this is the very first episode of 2022. Woo! Woo. <laughs> we are seven, eight, nine months into 2021, 2022, and this is the first episode. Main reason for that is on November 30th, 2021, we, we uh, welcomed our fourth child into the world. And uh, yeah, it's been a whirlwind ever since. That's right. Yeah, so Caden Burns was born on uh, November 30th, and uh, yeah, it's been exciting. We've had a lot of updates. We have one big update for everyone. We're moving overseas. We're moving to Japan. 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 In one month's <laughs> time, we're going for a year. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. We'll talk more about that later in the episode. Uh, but yeah, just a lot of activity surrounding that event and the logistics and stuff. Life so. has been super exciting, super fast-paced. We've been doing a lot, getting a lot done, uh, living up every moment we have. So much so we didn't have time for our podcast. Yeah, honestly, but. like, yeah, I feel like we've been pretty balanced. I mean, it's been hectic, but we've, you know, we've kept up our adventures and things. We just haven't had too much time for the podcast. But yeah, we're doing that now. And we've been keeping up with the YouTube channel. So if you've been following YouTube, and if you haven't, subscribe, because we're at two and a half thousand subscribers and going for three. So yeah, if you could subscribe, that'd be great. And we have, uh, yeah, I think we have awesome content there. So anyway. We have lots of updates for you guys, so without further ado, let's get to the show. You're listening to the FamVestor Podcast. If you're looking to raise your family with intention, gain financial independence, and live a life of true freedom, you're in the right place. Join us as we explore together how to create thriving families, because strong families are the cornerstone for a world at peace. Okay, welcome back. So we have a lot to get through, so we're just going to hit the highlights over these last nine months or so. Um, that we've kind of had. So first, we want to start with, you know, the birth of our child. So that was kind of exciting, very um, fast. Not kind of, it was very exciting. Very exciting. (laughs) It was life-changing. Our family will never be the same. It will never be the same, yes. (laughs) But in the best way possible. Four is not the same as three. Everyone says once you have three, it's the same. But no, I wouldn't say so. No. Someone asked me, is it the same? And I said, well, if with three you hit a level of insanity, then yes, four, you're still insane. (laughs) But other than that, (laughs) it's not the same. It's a lot of work. I think just always having a newborn (laughs) is a lot of work. And then having a, but happened, but what the biggest difference I think this time was having a seven year old and a newborn, you know. Like before, we had a five-year-old and a newborn. Now a seven-year-old, I don't know. The seven-year-old has a lot of different wants, a lot of different needs. Um, and yeah, there's just... definitely like two age brackets in our family. There's the five and seven who are active. They're starting to get into sports, and we have to keep their lives vibrant. And then we have our little ones, two, and, and an infant. And that is... <laughs> uh, we have a cameo appearance from the uh, seven-year-old. <laughs> Who's supposed to be in bed and has a headlamp on for some reason on his head. But anyway, yes, Valen, go to bed. Yes. So, um, yeah, it was a great, a great experience. He, our son, Caden, he was born November 30th. In 20 minutes. In 20 minutes. Walked into the hospital door 20 minutes later, he, born. He did not waste his time. They were still checking <laughs> us in after the baby was born. Yes. I'm like, why are these questions still relevant? But they just had to do them. But it was a very easy, quick birth. We are thankful for that. And he's been a joy in our life ever since. He's yeah. quite the charming little infant (laughs) yeah yeah i think what really screwed things up or made things hectic was uh we were just getting done renovating our garfield for family one of the units there uh and then the day after our son was born uh our tenant notified us that they're buying a house and moving out so then we immediately started renovations in lindhurst another four family up there um and so that was just like dealing with a newborn dealing with a renovation yeah uh, it was some lot. crazy months we had there we had all these renovations going on back to back we had supply chain shortages we had over busy contractors right. who i was still recovering from my <laughs> acl injury yeah that's right you couldn't so even couldn't walk around too well you had your acl you were hobbling around yeah um I did, I did complete my ice bath challenge. If no one's seen that on YouTube, I did 10 minutes, cut a hole in the ice and spent 10 minutes in the lake, uh, which was my goal and uh, accomplished that. So that was It wasn't a, a one-time thing. He was training up for it for months beforehand too. Yeah. 
So that was a big undertaking he took this past fall and winter was once a week every sunday yeah usually every sunday i would go into the water and start in october so it was kind of warm and then gradually it just got iced over and i would still go in and then finally i hit my 10 minute goal yeah you were um inspired by the wim hof method wim hof method yeah if you haven't heard of wim hof it's pretty cool for breathing techniques and cold cold exposure yeah i think in europe it's actually a lot more common place for people to do these kind of ice plunges so here everyone's like what you're cutting a hole in the ice and getting in are you mad yeah but um it it has its health benefits too and you were exploring that yeah check out since you couldn't do sports and everything else you love doing all right check out the (laughs) youtube video it's pretty good it's one of my favorites i've made i think i edited it pretty well so check that out um yeah um additionally uh some big news from family wise we moved in kaylee uh when she, i think right around when she turned two years old moved her in with the boys so all three of the older kids now share a room uh one bedroom and they're having a blast in there um we I made think a she, triple decker bunk bed a triple decker bunk because bed. that's what they wanted those were the terms that our oldest was willing to give up his bed so that we could put <laughs> Kaylee on the bottom. He's like, well, you got to build me another one. We should make a video. <laughs> I'll make a video of that triple-decker uh, bunk bed. That's not out yet. But, uh, yeah, they've been enjoying themselves. We still play boxcar for them every night. We have the uh, Hoopla app from our library, and which has 200 boxcar, two-hour-long audiobooks, and uh, they listen to that right now. Um, yeah, so that's been going pretty good. Um, my Toyota Yaris, which I was touring, crashed. Um, so someone rented it and crashed it, uh, which was unfortunate. That happened also around like January time frame. Thankfully, no one was hurt. No one was hurt, so that was great. Um, and yeah, but the, the it car, did total the vehicle. Yeah, the car was totaled, but Turo gave me a good like six thousand dollars, I think, for it, and I only paid five thousand dollars for it, like seven years ago, maybe even longer. It might have been ten years ago. Um, so anyway, made out good, made uh, 12K for the last two years I was touring it. So in total, I think I made like 18K on this car that I had for seven years. And um, yeah, so it worked out pretty well in the end. I haven't t- found anything just because used cars are so expensive nowadays. So I haven't toured anything else in replacement. But uh, yeah, that's an update. Um, we all got COVID. We got COVID beginning of the year. It wasn't bad for us. We just had uh, headaches. All of us had, uh, all the kids had one day of fever and then they were pretty much over it. We just had headaches, right? I guess you suffered a little more than I did. I just had like one day of headaches. Yeah, I had like a bad flu for about a week and a half. Yeah. But everybody else did fine. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, I think overall we, did, we made out pretty good. Yeah, thankfully we were all right. Um, always scary navigating that. Yep. Took the boys skiing. Sun Marie did uh, using my season pass because I had the ACL injury. <laughs> That's right. The plan was that I would be home this winter with the baby, taking my time, recuperating. But no, then you tore your ACL. Yes. So then I had to get right back on the skis. And I was home <laughs> alone with the babies nursing Because them. somebody had to take the kids on the mountain, right? Yes. Yeah, it was actually a really great ski season. The boys were a part of a homeschool ski club, which they really enjoyed. And they really developed their skiing abilities from the beginner training area to the bunny slope and then ultimately to the top of Vernon Peak at Mountain Creek where we ski and taking the greens all the way down on their own without a leash. Yeah, we have some good videos of that too, I think, of Mm -hmm. uh, just teaching kids how to ski. Very rewarding to see the progress. Yeah. Uh, We also did some ice skating on our lake. Uh, Lake froze over, and uh, yeah. That was pretty cool. Made our own ice rink. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, We got a 3D printer, and we've been 3D printing a lot of things. I think useful things. I made a video on that too, like 3D printing with kids. Uh, Yeah, I couldn't recommend uh yeah we got it for a 100 bucks it's um pretty good 3d printer i would really recommend it it's the uh, ender 3d pro um and yeah there's free online cad software for kids tinkercad really cool our kids have been doing it they love it yeah i really <laughs> recommend the whole and it's process. very user friendly yeah check out the youtube video we took a road trip to florida and we didn't just go to uh, disneyland we went really south florida to the most south you can go in the united we went states all the way to key west yeah so that was we a went 20 through all the keys 
from New Jersey is a 22 hour drive down mm-hmm. to Key West. And we did it with all four kids. We did. Um, it was an adventure. We the baby didn't... was only like just barely three months old at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did we make a video? I don't think we did. That should be a podcast episode. We'll probably do one. <laughs> Traveling I am, on yeah. long road trips with babies. <laughs> I do have footage. I was going to make a video. I still need to do that. So yeah, keep your eyes open for that. They but... were champs. It was a great experience we yeah. slow traveled our way down right. you know took our time and made multiple stayovers in yeah williamsburg virginia spots yep jekyll island georgia uh, orlando florida and then finally the keys mm-hmm. but on the way back i think we did it oh, in um miami fort lauderdale area as well. oh yeah 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 yep. yeah so the way down we took like four or five days way up though i think we did it in two days we only stayed yeah. in um Myrtle Beach, I think, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. So, but that that worked out pretty well too. You know, yeah. just traveling at night when the kids are sleeping and uh, Best us taking time turns. To travel. Yep, yep, and having a portable urinal, I think, is key is necessary, wouldn't you say? Maybe no comment. Okay, moving <laughs> on. Um, yeah, unfortunately, our Airbnb had to get shut down. So our Japanese style Airbnb. Um, we shut mm, it down. It could yeah. be temporary. We're still trying to work things out with the, the, the city and zoning and all that and trying to get things approved. But for now, we shut it down. The town has decided they don't want Airbnbs. Yes. So. Anyway, it was always bonus income. You know, we definitely made back our renovation costs for that room. And now we have that room for whatever we want to use it for. I mean, legally, it's probably going to be storage or maybe an office or I don't know. I don't know what. So we're still trying to figure that out. Bit of a bummer, but we'll bounce back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, if you're interested in starting Airbnb, that's also a nice video I have. Um, I think it's called Fujisan Hotel on YouTube. I would check it out. It's pretty cool if you want to get started. Yeah, Airbnb, I don't know. Anyway, enough about that. <laughs> Watch the video. Um, yeah, we want to make this video quick. We got button quail, which was pretty cool. So I guess yes. we started with um, <laughs> with butterflies. Like we did a grow your own butterfly kit. We ordered that, got caterpillars in the mail, grew them after 21 days. They transformed into butterflies, cocooned and all that. Um, and then we were inspired by the process. And when we went to a butterfly exhibit in Key West, um, they had these tiny They also had an aviary quail. with birds. And there were these adorable little fluffy white, snowball looking things (laughs) with beaks and we had to know what they were and they were called button quail which is an exotic breed of quail smallest in the quail family they lay an egg a day uh once they're full grown and full growth just takes eight weeks right but uh very fascinating little birds we saw it we love it and we had to have it yes so we ordered 15 (laughs) eggs off ebay ordered an incubator also off ebay and incubated the eggs only two hatched for us uh which apparently is common when you ship eggs but anyway only two hatched and then but we luckily we got a we had a male and a female and now we have 10 10 like 10 10 button quail chicks that are about to start laying i think they must be about full full grown now right yeah our our two had eggs that we also incubated and we had a much better hatch rate for the ones that that our quail laid and we hatched out i think 18 quail yeah maybe so yeah we did sell sell seven of them sold a batch of them yeah to a very happy button quail uh amateur who is learning the ropes (laughs) yeah i also have a youtube video on that so check that out and if you are interested in button quail we are trying to uh find a new home for them before we move away in a month uh to japan because we are not bringing them with us no at least that's not the plan but they make great pets they're not very noisy yeah and they've been a lot of fun we keep them indoors really cool for our kids to see the the whole life cycle life cycle from egg to chick to adult bird to to laying its own eggs Mm -hmm. it's been a pretty neat experience for our kids to observe and to also learn how to take care of a pet and how to clean the cage how to feed them and And we've also eaten the eggs Mm hard-boiled sunny side up done it all they are super tiny eggs (laughs) (laughs) i think we ate 24 one day i knew and then we still needed to have chicken eggs chicken eggs for breakfast afterwards yeah that, i need to make a video of it but our little baby was eating a tiny hard-boiled egg and the baby could handle it because it was so tiny yeah <laughs> they were fun yeah <laughs> not filling but fun 
Yeah, we got an e-bike, uh, which was kind of cool. I was debating about the whole e-bike thing for a while, but we love it. We got the Rad Wagon Four. Yeah, this thing is awesome. It's like the, it's like the minivan of the bike world. Yeah. Hypothetically, we... this Rad Wagon could tow six kids. Six kids. And if you seven, attach a trailer a to it without the trailer though like today we had all four kids on it we mm -hmm. went to the park um it has great accessories with a like a ride on bench in the back uh, with roll bars that keep you your kids safe and they can sit in it yeah and our kids are small enough and young enough that we can fit three <clears throat> three, three in them. the back one mm -hmm. in the front uh with the front mount um, yeah, I have a YouTube video on that. We took two back bike packing trips this summer, and we wouldn't have been able to do it without it, I don't think. Yeah. Um, so it made it very doable. Especially with young kids who, if you want to go long distances biking, they can't handle that with their small legs. And also, um, perhaps it wouldn't be safe for them either to be on their own independent bikes. Right. This enables you to go on great uh, biking ex excursions mm -hmm. all together because your kids are just right there on the bike with you. You have them. You have the assistance of the, the little battery-powered motor because it is significantly heavier when everybody's on there. It's a heavier bike, but wow, what a great vehicle. We mm -hmm. have been loving it. We just did uh, 50, 50 mile. miles on the DNL rail Delaware trails. Delaware Lehigh Trail, yeah. In Pennsylvania through the Lehigh Valley Gorge State Park. It was spectacular. Very nice. Wonderful bike ride. Kids were with us the whole time through, and yeah, the e-bike made it a joy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely would recommend it. Um, I'm glad we have it. I just wish we could bring it to Japan. Apparently, it's going to be too much of a pain uh, to get it there because they'd classify it as a motorcycle because there's a throttle, and uh, they don't like having more than two kids per bike anyway. So anyway, we're probably going to leave it here, which is quite disappointing because Japan is quite a biking culture, and you can uh, bike to most places, which we're planning to do, but... We're going to have to do it manually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll probably have to share two kids each. Maybe we'll buy e-bikes over there. We might buy e-bikes over there. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than button quail, we also got turtles, which we raised for a couple months and then released. The boys just were uh, playing in the backyard and saw the turtles emerging from the sand. And so they picked them up. They're like quarter sized. And uh, we had them in the house for, for two, two or three months. Uh, before we release them back into the lake. But uh, yeah, that was a cool experience. Um, yeah, so it's been a summer of unusual pets for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and adventure. So we did the bike packing. We also did kayaking on the Delaware. It wasn't an overnighter. It was just a drop in and drop out. Um, but that was fun because the boys each had their own kayaks, these little kid $100 kayaks that they've been using for a couple of years now or and uh yeah we entered on a more delicate part uh, not delicate <laughs> a more gentle part of the river um which the boys could handle and we had just a nice leisurely paddle down the river for a few hours as a family and that was beautiful yeah and uh yeah uh just two days ago or three days ago we went back uh backpacking for the first time as a family of six backpack camping yeah mm -hmm. so that was interesting um it was hard because uh we forced our two-year-old to walk the whole thing and it was quite a big hill and it was quite far i think it was about two miles to the campsite forced is a strong word but <laughs> yeah we didn't we did force her well we didn't we... pick her up mm-hmm I was. Uh, we were talking. But we made lots of stops. We did breaks. We didn't lots of snacks. march her. We <laughs> yes. We were empathetic. We held her hand. But it was hard to carry all the gear and the baby, right. and carrying another two-year-old would have been too much. So it was an interesting experience. Um, she hasn't gone on too many of these. We we did uh, these we, trips all the time with the boys when they were younger. But it was a little bit different because they were just more adventurous and they needed to run off their energy. Whereas with her, that's not really so much of a, right. a need in her case. And actually, she just really would rather be carried. be carried. She's always being carried. And she's so light. It's so easy to carry her. But I think it's time for her to start you know, becoming a hiker. And this trip was great for that because, yeah, she hiked the whole thing. It was like right. four miles around trip and it's up and down right. mountains. She was a champ and she did great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just about to release a video on that. So, uh, yeah, if you're thinking about backpacking as a family. Um, Definitely, def if you need to motivate your kids to hike 
bring lots of good snacks yes. that you can a jerky chips bribe, candy bribe them to take another 50 steps <laughs> right or just take minds off take their mind off uh off their thing the boys didn't complain once and they were carrying backpacks with their yeah. own sleeping bags that was also training for them to learn how to carry their right. own gear which is great yeah i think our pace was a lot slower mm -hmm. so that's why they did pretty good and they weren't tired mm-hmm yeah anyway that's kind of it for uh what we've been up to these last past nine months and now the uh the next big adventure is ahead of us japan you know being there for a whole year on a land that we both well you don't speak at all and i don't speak too much of but uh yeah it's gonna be a, a great adventure um yeah i'm excited yeah we're gearing up for that it it kind of came all of a sudden the decision when we found out in uh late spring i think yeah marchish um, maybe caught us caught us off guard a bit you know we were planning out our year thinking we'd be here and then all of a sudden yeah we i got the news oh you've been selected for this program which is pretty exciting yeah so it's through work they'll pay for housing and i'll be working there uh, as an exchange engineer um, so it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and we'll be able to save a lot of money because we're planning to rent out our personal residence here. Um, so we'll be able to bank all that and should come out ahead financially and have this awesome adventure um, overseas for a year and different yeah. cultural experience for the kids. And I think on this podcast, many times we have spoken with families who slow travel the world or who are doing um, interesting adventures with their family while homeschooling or traveling and here we are this is our chance to give this give this a shot you know uh, a long longer experience than the usual trip and vacation and travel so it should be very interesting definitely hoping the kids can pick up the language that would be amazing if they would be able to speak Japanese by the end of the year um, but just being able to experience the culture and it's it's part of our family's heritage so um, they'll get to connect with part of their identity as being Japanese, which is really awesome too. Yeah. Yeah. So lots of awesome things we've done and lots of awesome things ahead. So, uh, <laughs> still a whirlwind. So, uh, we'll see when we make our next episode. <laughs> yes. We shall see if it's in Japan or maybe before we'll see if we also we'll see what we can do. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Thank you for listening. Thanks for joining. Thanks for being a loyal subscriber and uh, staying with us. Sorry for that long lag in release, but, uh, yeah, no, definitely appreciate you guys. And, uh, yeah, leave us a comment, leave us a note, email us, uh, get in touch, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. So Godspeed, everyone.